Okay. <laughs> well, good morning, one and all. So we're here, as every morning in this conference, uh, to begin our day with spiritual practice uh, related to and coming from the heart of one of the great sacred traditions, which are for me like the colors of the rainbow, breaking down and informing the mystery of what the one light is. So today we're in the Christian color of the rainbow, and uh, I would like to share with you uh, a little bit of the time of the practice that's been my stable practice for 25 years now, centering prayer. Uh, some of you, I, I dare say even probably a majority of, the of you in the room know a little bit about it, but since we've also got a streaming audience and many who don't, uh, I thought I'd begin with a quick and dirty version of what the practice is all about and how to do it. And then we're going to do it for a while with a little bit of uh, sacred chanting to lead into it. So that's the drill. Anyway, centering prayer is a very, very simple, simplified form of meditation in the Christian tradition. It was developed in about the mid-1970s mid uh, by Father Thomas Keating and a group of his Trappist Catholic monks uh, with the purpose of putting the essence of the Christian tradition of contemplative prayer into a simple meditational form that would be accessible and practicable for people actually living busy lives out in the world. So you didn't have to commit yourself to become a, uh, an inmate at a monastery for the rest of your life in order to have access to the experiential treasures of the Christian contemplative tradition. By, by doing this practice in a daily and faithful way, it could invite people in in a way that is remarkably efficacious into the heart of what the experience that Christians have classically known as contemplation is really all about. You can get a taste of it, and that taste can transform your life. So centering prayer, uh, like all meditation practices, the overall in intention is to put a stick in the spokes of what the Buddhists so properly call monkey mind. It's that, that incessant kind of automatic, obsessive, compulsive tendency of the mind to spit out one thought after another, and then we grab on the thought, whatever pops into our mind, we think it. And that's what keeps our, our being in agitation and always kind of outward focused. And it also, um, you know, it, it, it keeps us upset, and it also cements our identity with our small self. It's the one that's having all these thoughts, doing all these things, you know, it's that kind of self. So it keeps us locked like a little squirrel cage, you know, in a level of being which is less powerful and less profound than all the traditions know is actually accessible to human beings. So like all meditation practices, it cuts through that surface. But what makes centering prayer a little bit innovative amongst the families of meditations is that most meditation practices, particularly beginning meditation practices, do their cutting through monkey mind on the front end by giving the mind something really simple to focus on or focus in, like following your breath or saying a mantra, so that the mind doesn't have that tendency to veer off into thinking in the first place, because it's got a, an already a steady sort of pedal point for its attention. Centering prayer isn't like that. It realizes that thinking is part of the normal sort of organic function of the organism of a human being. Thoughts are going to come, and that when you try to push them away, you energize them because energy flows where attention goes, and if you're resisting thinking, uh, that's what you're doing. You're, you're in resistance. So rather than trying to stop thinking, resist thinking, push thinking away, quiet it down, it gives you a very simple method for just releasing thinking once you notice you're engaged with it, once you notice you've gotten caught up in that squirrel cage again. So it's a practice that works on the back end. Uh, now, a thought in Centering Prayer is defined as anything that brings your attention 
to a focal point. So it could be an idea, yeah. It could be a message. It could be a voice from God. Uh, it could also be an itch on your nose uh, or a, a neon light buzzing. If it calls your attention so you start focusing on and thinking of it, that's a thought. And the instruction in centering prayer is to just let it go. Now, a little bit of a talk on letting go. You just let it go. So somebody asked me a question at a retreat the other day. She said, what's letting go? I don't understand what letting go is. Well, letting go is really kind of obvious when you look at it. Uh, it's like, uh, yep, <laughs> you just open your hand and the, the thing falls out. We should do it where it's louder. There. Voila, letting go. Uh, but, you know, where people often get confused is that they confuse it with resisting thought, like pushing it away. It's not that. It's not that kind of effort. You catch yourself thinking, you let the thought go. So that's the whole practice for the 20 minutes that one would typically do this. It's just a matter of as a thought comes up and as you sort of quietly notice and you will, oh, I'm thinking again. I'm caught up thinking about the laundry. Let it go. So that's the essence, and it's not, it's not hard to do the prayer once you've sort of let go of all your expectations about what meditation ought to be. It's hard to value it, because we don't understand how just sitting there letting go of thoughts coming up can be anything of a spiritual practice. And this is where the, uh, the radical mystery of centering prayer comes in. Uh, there was one really important uh, exchange that happened early on in the annals of the centering prayer uh, oral tradition, where a very type A nun tried this practice for the first time under Thomas Keating's tutelage. <laughs> and at the, at the end, it was, oh, Father Thomas, I'm such a failure. In 20 minutes, I've had 10,000 thoughts. How lovely, says Thomas. 10,000 opportunities to return to God. Beautiful. So centering prayer is ultimately a pathway of return. It, it understands that thinking is normal, particularly for us overstimulated Westerners, but every time we're able to let go of the thought, it's, it's a pathway of return and opening to something deeper. So the work is done there. Theologically, we see that letting go in, in association with, uh, with what in Christian theology is called kenosis, or the non-clinging or self-emptying of Jesus. Letting go is a non-clinging practice, right? All you Buddhists can see that. Uh, so every time we do this, we're, every time we let go of even a little thought, what am I having for lunch today? Uh, you know, it's... It's in solidarity with this overall core practice of Jesus, of letting go, letting go, letting go, non-clinging, non-identifying, non-entitlement, which is at the heart of the Christian path. Uh, it's in solidarity with putting on the mind of Christ. But we've also discovered that neurologically, there's some very interesting things that as we move our mind from fixed on a thought to this drop, which is actually measurable on the fMRI and other machines, there is an actual sort of physiological thing that happens that, that models and enfleshes what, uh, what the Eastern Orthodox tradition has called putting the mind in the heart. Uh, which entrains the rhythms of the brain to the field of the heart. So they become one object of, of perception, of, of organization, of being in the world. And we're going to see when I come back and talk this afternoon how that, that intuition, that the mind must be in the heart, is the key to practicing compassion in a way that moves beyond ego identification and activism and do-goodism. So this is really important stuff. Centering prayer is boot camp in meditation form 
for putting on the mind of thought, Christ, for putting the mind in the heart, for rearranging the neurology and the theology of perception, thought by thought by thought, using that one thing that you have an infinite abundance in your life, never going to run out, your thoughts, as a way to practice and become a maestro at this inner action of letting go, which becomes the outer action of letting be. So simple, simple three-point instruction. First of all, in centering prayer, the intention is everything because we're not giving our mind a focal point, something to put your attention on, not a breath, not a mantra, not, not anything. So our intention carries the weight of how we do this practice. It's the depth and sincerity of your intention that will carry how quickly you notice when you're hooked by thinking and return to the practice. So, so the intention that generally works, it'll be private for each one of you, and you'll have your own languaging, is it, is in the right ballpark when you're here to be totally available to the presence of the divine source working deep in your own being and in the being of the world. Uh, some people would say in, in, in theological, in, in kind of personal language, to be available to God. If that language uh, is a stumbling block to you, to be available to divine source, to be available to the nature of the arising from the deep. Uh, this icon behind me is a classic kind of Christian icon of the Trinity, which pictures God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you know, if you want to call it that, as a field of interdependent arising, bound by fellowship and hospitality. It's a good way of picturing the divine source. So in that way, just be available to what's deeper than your own microdrama, okay? And uh, so that's the goal. Our goal is not to make our mind empty, impossible, at least at the beginning stage, not to seek for some sort of exalted state, but just to, just to make yourself available, to return to that prompt at the ready. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to put teeth in our intention by the simple deal. When you catch yourself thinking, you let the thought go. That's the deal we're going to do, you know. So if you get in there and you find all of a sudden, well, why am I thinking about which, which session I want to attend? Ha! Huh. Catch yourself thinking, you let the thought go. Doesn't matter even if it's a big mystical experience or a divine mother's appearance or if you got an object for your attention, aha, that's a thought, let it go, let it go. Practicing once again, let it go. Now, in order to help facilitate that motion and do it quickly with a lot of, well, should I let go of this thought or is this good, do I want to keep it? You know, so you avoid all that kind of <laughs> stuff, you know. What we tend to do in Centering Prayer, particularly as we start the practice, is to use something called a sacred word as a point of reference. It's a word you choose or you ask the Spirit or your inner guide or holy wisdom to help you choose it that stands for your willingness to do this deal. Catch yourself thinking, let the thought go. It's like a little piece of red string tied around your finger that reminds you, oh yeah, I was going to be here, I was going to sit in the presence of God, I was going to make myself available. So it brings you back to remember your core intention. Uh, again, it's a mnemonic device. Uh, it can be any word of your choosing, it can be a, 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 a theological word, it can, ah, God, Abba, uh, Allah, you know, whatever your tradition, it can be the mantra that, that the Maharishi gave you 20 years ago. Uh, it, whatever you can use that, that just helps you in this context to remember that you're letting go of thinking, okay? Uh, I like to say to people, no, it's not a mantra. It doesn't replace your sacred word. What it does is it's more like a windshield wiper. It just flicks the screen clear. So you don't start thinking about your word. You just let it do its work 
and get back into that opening, remembering that it is actually the moment of letting go that does the work in this prayer. It's not the state you get to after you let go. It's the actual perfecting of this action that is what this prayer is all about. And what you will begin to discover carries you deeper and deeper in a, into a whole new world of heartful perception and changed behavior around this new identity. So that's the spiel, you know, basically. And now we're going to sit down and practice this prayer for about 15 minutes, okay? And I'd like to lead into it, if we can, by inviting you all to collect yourselves individually and collectively as we, we participate together in this entry chant. Uh, the word comes out of Psalm 46. It's one sentence, be still and know that I am God. But every time we chant it, we're going to take one word away. It's like peeling the onion skin. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am be still and know, be still, be. So we're going to sing that all on one tone. If you hear harmony, put it in. And allow that chant, which we'll do a couple times, to collect your own intention. But even more important than that, to form out of this group of, you know, 150 or however many are here today, one collective body of yearning and resonance, because it's that unit that begins to change the planet. Okay, off we go. <clears throat> and you can join me. Hop in if you want to, if you want to hold back on the chant till you see how this is working, you're fine to do that. But remember, I'm going to keep moving right on. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still be. So what, uh, just join where the train is or you're going to find you have an extra car on it. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be and we sit.
It's a wonderful practice from the Buddhist tradition to dedicate the merit that has been raised in the work of meditation uh, on behalf of all sentient beings. And I'd like to offer that practice in our conclusion today, that we've generated and collected here a collective body of quiet, calm, equanimity, and compassion. May we offer that up collectively into our planet at a particularly dangerous and volatile time that reckless tempers and reactivities may be calmed and that everything backs down from the edge. We offer it up. Thank you to you all. May your day be blessed. Keep connection with this center you've touched. <laughs>